I'm Mike Dimas, and this is Pinball Shenanigans. All right. If all goes according to plan, could be pretty darn close to finished. I probably have said that like five times now, though. Six million dollar man. Kind of uh, been going on for quite a while here, but eh, it should wrap up soon. You know, if someone would buy my Transformers LE, then I would have had a new project already happening right here. But, you know, it is always a good idea to finish what you started before you start something else. Although I've been known to work on multiple machines at a time, and the one advantage about that is if you get stuck waiting for parts, you can always work on the other project while waiting. But as for six million dollar man, let's uh, zoom in here. I just sanded the new piece of 600 grit sandpaper. The clear coat that I had put on last time and applied a new coat. And in the middle there, I kind of put it on a little bit heavier because the, cl the clear coat is so thin. So I actually did like kind of in a lot of spots two or three coats during this one session here. So kind of laying it on thick, I'm going all out. You can see right there. Like when it dries, it you can't tell about really brush strokes or unevenness or anything. It all blends in really nicely. Pop bumpers are pretty violent, so I'm gonna have to put on some more thick layers there. And over the inserts, I did a couple few over here, a couple few, and in front of the slingshots. I decided that is one of the most dandruff potential area out there is when the ball's kicking and hitting the wood. That seemed to be where a lot of the dandruff was and in the pop bumper area. So I'm just gonna keep on layering this on. This is what, technically third coat? But this third coat has like two or three coats. And then once this dries, I'm gonna keep loading it on. And then if there's a bit of dandruff after that, that is is what it is, play it as it lies. So there's not much more I can really do about it or that I'm gonna want to. If I see some flakes, then oh well, it's pinball and play it and enjoy it and don't sweat the small dandruff stuff. Um, what else did I do? I noticed a cable tie was disconnected on this harness here, so I secured that. And one of those little corner blocks of wood, not that one, but one that was right there, you can't see. Somehow that I knocked that loose probably from the vacuum, old glue. So I've got that glued back on. I still have to adjust my end of stroke switches. Let's throw on the machine just for fun. Because I think I mentioned in the last video that I did, I put number two display back where it belongs. And remember it was like kind of a little bit fluttery before. We were focusing on display number one last time. And the fact that it actually worked was sweet. But now number two is also happy. So displays are done. I guess we kind of have to really test the flipper rebuild too because other than a couple quick games, that one Friday night when we discovered the dandruff, um, we haven't really given the flippers a good solid test yet, but I'm sure they'll be good as long as they don't start drifting up on us like what happened with Twilight Zone the other day, um, they were aligned, and after a couple games, they kind of had migrated upwards a little bit. Because you can crank on those set screws so tight, but every time you flip, it wants to move one thousandth of an inch. And after a thousand flips, well, I guess, let's say 250 flips can move a quarter of an inch if it's not sticking. So 
as long as these guys don't drift on me, then I'll be happy. But yeah, near the finish line. Oh, right, I forgot. I did get a couple packages in the mail. Not pinball parts per se, but definitely uh, this box here. I hope to significantly improve my my life with on this table. Well, I also bought me some new crazy glue uh, gel at the dollar store. Super glue. Somewhere it says, yeah, thick gel at the top in red. That I will use to secure these caps to the rings and create some new uh, Evil Knievel reproduction pop bumper caps. So... I was kind of doing that a little bit here and a little bit there for people, but honestly, it's it's not really worth all the time and effort and energy, and um, it's just, yeah, those are probably the last two I'm ever going to do, but uh, I do sell, like, little decals that go on top. I've got some spares, and I sell them, but don't tell the Evil Knievel family. They will send me a cease and desist letter for all the tens of dollars I've made but you stick the decal right on there and boom you got your reproduction evil Knievel pop bumper cap so I won't be doing the whole caps anymore I'll just be continuing with the decals anyway working on this table here I'm always like trying to like get the trouble light positioned in a manner that gives me some extra light or I'll turn on the flashlight, even when I was working on the displays, I like kind of set it to the side. It's just not, it's not good. It's not great. So I finally got me a table lamp from Amazon and cost me 30 bucks shipped, which is, you know, I was thinking I might be able to get one for 20, but whatever, 30 bucks delivered to your door. You click a few buttons and there it is. That's kind of cool. So this, I think, could be a significant improvement in my workbench life. So let's plug it in and see what it looks like. All right, this is a little block like that. Can you see where I put this? And now we can pretend to solder something and see what it looks like. Hold on one second. Well. Just gotta untangle this first here, unzip it, untwist it, untwist. Okay, here we go. Voila. All right, so, oh yeah, the switch is on the wire. Let's uh, see what we got. Okay, so I think I like it a lot. This is, yeah, I, I needed this like years ago. So we can use our little soldering guy here. And then, uh, yeah, I'll just be able to, I'll just be able to see what I'm doing so much better. Okay, yeah, good decision on the new light. Uh, is going to be so much better. And then the other thing I got, right, one second, I got to grab scissors. This is, again, not necessarily pinball specific, but it could be useful. I think it was uh, Ed. Is that is that your name, Edward, that I met you at uh, Maple? And you had one of these guys while you were working on your black hole over there. Um, I had been thinking about getting stencils. I went to Maple Pinball. And what do you know? Ed was using stencils. I hope I got your name right. I'll have to check my notes or my messages. Uh, there's so many shenanigans out there. It's really hard to keep track of y'all. And then you got like a Facebook name, a real name, uh, pin side name, a YouTube name, pinball revolution name, and can I keep track of, and your avatar name, like, no, not. Okay, so this,
is the stencils. So this is going to be for like outlining inserts maybe next time. But Ed told me that make sure you get the one with the little nipples. Because then, after you've traced out your circle, it gives you a little bit of space here so that it doesn't stick to your paint. You know what I mean? It's like a little spacer. So I've got me, uh, uh, I don't know how many circles, but here's the circle manual. No, that's the desk manual. The circles don't come with instructions. The one time I want to read instructions about how to operate circles. Let's see here. Thickness 0 0.03 inches. I was just kind of curious. Oh, there it is. 44 circles. Oh, I could have done like some challenge. Like how many circles is this? And then take it away and you guess whoever guesses closest wins. Absolutely nothing. Uh, but yeah, that's what I got in the mail. I'm going to go uh, see what else I can do productively tonight. And uh, I'll report back if I... Because uh, there's not a lot left to do. And six million, I got to wait for it to dry. So we'll see what else I can find in the meanwhile. Okay, while we're waiting for clear to dry, we might as well try and assemble these pop bumper caps. And this could be kind of a tutorial on how to make your own reproduction Evil Knievel pop bumper caps in a way. Uh, but we're going to use the brand new light here, which is already going to come in handy. So that's pretty sweet. All right, put that there. Nice illuminated work area. Okay, so when I've ordered these from Pinball Resource in the past, they've come already together. For whatever reason, this time they're separate. Uh, these are slant dome, so they're thicker on one side and thinner on the other. So we gotta line this up so that the slant is at the top and the, the thinnest part's at the bottom, you know, on these points here. Otherwise, it will be kind of wonky. So. That's the first thing I have to consider. So I figure I'll mark the thickest part here. There's a tiniest little tab right there. But I don't know if that is just from the molding process or if that is a mark for the actual thickest spot because it's pretty darn close. So maybe that is. Yeah, maybe that's going to be the mark because it's that's about the thickest spot, so we'll even mark that. Just a little black mark there. And would it be happier if I zoom in? Would that make life better? That's such a small mark that you can't even see it. But that's the goal. We don't really need to see it. Okay, that, does that look like the thickest? Honestly, it looks like maybe over a little smidge. Could be the thickest. Okay, minuscule detail, but we gotta we gotta make sure that that happens. That it goes to the top of the ring. Okay, get in the ring. What is that from? That pinball quote. Okay, so I need to uh, poke a hole. Should I use my uh, lead here? Probably shouldn't use my multimeter lead. Let me get something more pokery, but better for the job. There we go, we'll use a nail. Okay. This stuff, if you're careful, and don't get glue all over the place, you can use it more than once, but it's typically kind of a one-use application. Anyway, I ordered two sets here why they gave me six of the dome portions or the slant tops i have no idea but uh let's see like how far do these get in set like i don't want to get glue all over the place that'll look stupid it'll look very stupid so what is the maybe i should just put the glue on the back side yeah, that's what I think I'll do. Okay, so we'll align this. I was going to maybe put it around the rim and then install it, but I think there's a better chance that I'm going to 
get glue all over the place if I do that. Oh, by the way, I just found out that Teolis is running a tournament at Maple Pinball coming up uh, May 9th. He's doing three tournaments in one day. A uh, flip frenzy, a uh, fair strikes, and a, I think, a match play. So I'll be going to that faux show. That'll be fun. Okay, you can kind of see my black line is lined up to the top there. So my slant will be happy. And then I think I'm just going to do this. Just a little bit of glue, like so. I like that. That way I don't make a mess of glue on the top side. So that's actually not bad. That's easier than I thought it was going to be. So I got Eli's cat hair. We can't be gluing that onto this. <laughs> it would look like pube on your pop bumper cap. It wouldn't be cool. Okay. So I'm going to use this little nick here and stick that like so. The nick is right there. The edge is right there. Let's pop it in and see how that looks. Yeah, I'd say the thickest part is aligned and the thinnest part is aligned like so. Yeah, I think I'm happy with that. Okay, we'll glue that. Like so. Trying not to get too sloppy with it, but it might be too late. Okay. Uh huh. There we go. Okay, I just got to clean this off. Or maybe I'll do the other ones. I'll just uh, do that after. You can only tolerate watching uh, two of these. We don't need to do a whole friggin' assembly line. Okay, now this is I, I don't normally. I wouldn't normally apply it, but since we're rolling, we're going to apply it right now before the glue is even dry. So these are the decals I had made. All right. Like I said, don't tell anyone. <laughs> Special the, especially the evil Knievel family. Okay. Sorry. I'm just trying to peel one of these off. They're like clear vinyl. Whoa. Because you cannot buy these reproduction Evil Knievel pop bumper caps anymore. They're like hot stamped. And Steve Young doesn't make them because he doesn't have the a license from Evil Knievel. And I'm just making a couple for, uh, you know, friends. It's not like a friggin' Evil Knievel business I'm running here. So it's got to line this up ever so perfectly. It's a little more difficult to do it with the camera in your face. There we go. Oh, I can never work with crazy glue without getting it all over myself. Okay, let's see. I think that's pretty lined up. Do I have an evil Knievel pinball machine right now? No, I do not. But I'm going to save... I think what I'll do is I'll save one set for if I get an Evil Knievel. Because this, if I sell this, like, invariably, tomorrow's gonna, someone's going to call and say they have an Evil Knievel for sale. I've had a few over the years. Um, probably four or five, maybe? Uh... I do have a record somewhere, maybe. Or maybe not. Keep track of some crap. Some crap I do not. Okay, that. That's pretty good, actually. Pretty good. Okay, so here we go. There you go. That's your... Evil Knievel Pop Bumper Reproduction Do-It-Yourself Kit. That's 
turned out pretty good actually. Um, not that much more of a pain in the ass to have to glue the uh, slant dome toppers in, but yeah, all right. Okay, still gotta wait for some more clear to dry, but I'll uh, see what else I can muster up in the meanwhile. I'm gonna do the other two now, but look, that whole time I was looking at this tiny little piece there for alignment, look at this. There's a whole friggin' indent there on the bottom for alignment. So, like, all you gotta do is line up that guy in the middle to there, and boom. Okay, so you don't need the marker, you don't need to think overthink it, you just gotta actually use your eyeballs and look. Okay, these caps are done. Now I have to wait for these guys to dry. I figure if I let them dry like this, then the gas is kind of trapped in and that could cause maybe some badness. So I'm going to let them dry like this. But my star isn't perfectly aligned to the dead nut center on the top there. But it'll be fine. Some are better aligned than others. That one's like almost perfect. That one's almost perfect. And the last one, pretty darn close. But yeah, so, okay. Those guys are done. And uh, moving on. All right, next thing I think I'll do while waiting for stuff to dry is test and organize these uh, fuses that came in that coin box. This one, I don't think I need to test that one, but uh, we will amalgamate these into the grand scheme of fuse things. That's the next thing on the list. All right, that's all done. I think I had two 15 amp fast blows, several 20 amp fast blows. There was a one four amp slow blow, some five amp flat fast blows, and some three amp slow blows. So add that to the pile and uh, all good. All right, next thing on the list. When we were playing this uh, game, maybe last week or the week before, we were kind of cheating and using the continue button, which I like almost never ever use, but we wanted to try and get deep into this game, and uh, we did cheat our way to the wizard mode. <laughs> but uh, you can probably see right now which light bulb is out. And it was kind of throwing us off just a little bit because we weren't sure for surezies, surezies that we were on that mode. But there it is. I gotta change a light bulb. Yep, that's what I gotta do. Change one light bulb. But... <laughs> I was almost thinking of doing a gameplay video of this where I try and cheat my way to a wizard mode because I don't know that I can get there <laughs> otherwise it is a tough game it's a lot of shots this is the first mini wizard mode this is the second mini wizard mode I think I got to this legit this one I've only been to um, once or twice by cheating I think maybe just once actually yeah it was because that mode forced you to hit this color changing ball like six times i think the it's really cool how the game progresses actually i really should take a gameplay video of it i think i might do that and cheat my way to the finish line if i can because i've tried to cheat a few times and still didn't make it allows you to buy an extra ball like 10 times so it's like a you know 13 ball game and uh i've tried a few times and only made it once so it's difficult, but the further you do progress, the more like shots it forces you to make. Like this shot, that light, that insert comes on. You rarely see that insert. And then this one, presto changeo. You never see that one, I don't think, that's telling you to hit this specifically until you get to power change mode. Um, but yeah, the game is just freaking cool. I'll have to do a little tour of all the magic of pinball magic with all the fun toys in this game um anyway that's next change one light bulb of course the bulb is like one of the most inaccessible bulbs in the machine 
<laughs> like it's kind of the subway's in the way and to remove that circuit board I see two screws on the bottom but is there a screw on the top also behind the subway do I have to remove the subway anyway of course it's not just the easiest bulb change it's a friggin side mounted 555 those are the most tricky ones to get in and out uh, and in a tricky spot so yeah changing a light bulb yeah sure enough if you wanted to remove the board for easier access you would have to remove the subway because there's a screw there and a screw there but I managed to like finagle my little fingers into the uh, small air okay there it is um, oh mother's calling I'll be back but I got the bulb changed yay there we go. Well, if I turn off the light, it'll look better, sort of. We can see it better. The one cool thing about Capcom games, at least Pinball Magic, is that every single bulb is controlled. And in certain light shows, they go from, like, very dim to very bright. And it's a really cool effect. And I probably mentioned this before, but that's the reason I didn't LED this machine. If you do get an LED OCD board, you can probably counter that, but if you put these into LEDs, LEDs just turn on and off, and they don't do the fading thing. See, look. See, it's kind of... I guess if you look at the whole play field, you can kind of see it better, but and it comes on and off nice and slow, and you totally would lose that with LEDs, unless the LED OCD board does exactly what it says it would do, but... I think it's like 500 bucks so this is one of the only modern machines i think i never led'd that i kind of like you know did up for my collection that may not be true but yeah yeah all right that is done okay next thing to do on ghostbusters i just noticed that's eh, kind of common on many games maybe even stern this switch here and it's starting to bend outward. They have anti-sway switches that you can get. Oh, I think I have one that I was going to use on Whitewater that I didn't. I could potentially install that on there. But for now, just wanted to move that over a bit because that shot is friggin' tight enough as it is. And uh, every time you try and get up the ramp and you clip this side, it likes to bend that way. So maybe I'll bend it over a little bit more to the right so that it'll take many more ramp shots to bend it all the way back over to the left. But that's very minor, but that is always on the list, and now it is not. Okay, the clear coat is dry enough that I can kind of mess with the end of stroke switches now. So let's see how they behave here. I want them about an eighth apart. Let's see. I think I'm happy with that. And let's check the other side. I got a little bit of a spark there, which is pretty common. You know, in modern games, more modern games, they put the uh, capacitor on the end of stroke switch to help stop the sparkage and you know pitting that ultimately can be caused from that but um they didn't do that for the older games but all in all kim are you focused i think i'm happy with that also do you remember this solenoids um plastic bobbin was cracked in the corner there and the wire you know you could kind of pull this whole corner off the wires were all attached securely and firmly um i crazy glued it and now it's freaking perfect so i've played many games since that i just forgot to mention that so a little crazy glue and uh Bob is your uncle. All right, those are going off the list. I think I might move over to a couple white water fixes because although the clear coat is dry, 
it really does say wait three hours before you coat it and there's probably a good reason for that so i probably shouldn't do it again tonight i think if i do it one more session of clear tomorrow then that might be the end of the clear coat drama hopefully did I say white water or did I say whirlwind? I don't know, but I feel like I might have said white water. It's whirlwind that I want to check. Basically, the left in lane switch, is, I know for sure, is intermittent. And the upper right flipper is uh, its not settling very well. It just It's sticking a little bit. i got to address that. Uh, sometimes the ball, when it's kicking out of the uh, cellar there, it's hitting the top of the sling, I think. Maybe this the top right of the sling like it's clipping the sling so i might tweak that a little bit oh and the other thing is when you hold the flippers like just trapping the ball if you hold it long enough it goes into ball search like that shouldn't be the case should it so i gotta look into that also my hard plunge is not kind of going all the way around consistently but i think because the ball travels like six linear feet in an S trajectory that it needs to be a perfect plunge in order for it to make it around. I don't think that it's the strength of the plunge at all. I think it's the trajectory is not always perfectly consistent, which is understandable since it's traveling. Here, let's take you over there. I'll show you what I mean. So the hard plunge, the ball's got to go all the way, follow this track. Nope, follow this track. And it's got to not clip anything there. If it clips anything there on the way in, it's not going to be clean. Then it go all, goes all the way back there. Can't clip anything around there. Then all the way around back there, over that switch, over that switch. Then it's got to make its way to this flipper. So that may just be, like I believe, I tried to align for that when I was putting this together. And... Just one of those things that's not 100%. I think high speed has a similar, you know, issue. It's not always going to be a perfect plunge. It has a very similar plunge. And um, I think Secret Service had a similar plunge. All those plunges that cross the play field and loop around. So I think that might just be it is what it is. Sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't. But I'm going to check on these things. And I shall report back. Okay, so I tried to adjust the switch in place and I wasn't really loving it. So I removed the switch from underneath, manipulated it, and tweaked it. Now we're in switch test. And going to see uh, if it works consistently. So I don't know if you can hear the volume, but I'm just making a little thud. Here, listen. All right, that's what we're listening for. So, so far so good. Can't my ramp is up and I can't really drop it very easily. But let's try that. Yep, let's try again. Zoom out so you can see that a little bit better. Hey, look, my center post needs to be tightened. Ah, okay. Um, here, I'll let you see. Left return. Try that again, even faster. Left return. Okay. I think I'm happy with that. Throw it down there nice and quick. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Blue bumper stops it anyway. Okay, um, I'm happy with that. I'll tighten this bad boy up. Uh, don't know if that's T-nut underneath. Probably is. If that's the case, I probably can just use quarter inch wrench here. Step quarter, oh yeah, probably in here. Or is this my quarter inch? Yeah. Let's see. That's going to work. Oh yeah, that's tightening up good. Maybe just over time the ball smashing into that. Loosened it or somehow I just never tightened it. But there we go. That wasn't even on the list and it will never make it on the list. Okay, 
So the main thing now is upper flipper. Jeez, look at that. I wonder what the F is going on there. Okay, well, I'll be uh, investigating that. I will report back. Okay, so far, I haven't identified anything yet. It's really free and clear when the play field is up. And also, I've got my little up and down leeway, which is what you want. Okay. Um, it looks like did a pretty thorough rebuild on this flipper. The new sleeve, plunger, link, crank, stop, uh, and a stroke switch. So everything's pretty much rebuilt. The only thing I noticed is this one screw here. I don't know if that was always loose or just kind of worked its way out, but one of the bracket screws is a tiny little bit loose, so I'll check all the others. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, look at this. Oh, I was going to say one screw is missing there, but that's not true. Um, there's an insert there, so a screw cannot go there. That's where the red bulb is. Shouldn't do this while recording with the machine on because you're going to electrocute yourself. Um, but so far, that's the only thing I've discovered. I got to keep investigating here to see what the F is going on. Okay, I've caught the flipper in the act. I manually lifted the flipper and then slowly raised the play field. So it is currently in its stuck position, but it's so like subtle. I bet if I just touch anything, it'll fall back down. So even just lowering the, I mean, raising the play field the first time it fell. So I don't know, that leads me to believe it's more of an alignment thing than anything else. So I think I'll kind of take things apart and kind of put them back together again. Maybe, maybe put in a longer sleeve that kind of pokes out a little better because maybe that'll help with the alignment. Because that sleeve, you can barely even see it, so. But yeah, I think I might be onto something. I gotta say, I'm loving this lamp already. It's just lighting up my life. But for real, oh, I really could have used this months and years ago. I don't know why I just thought of it. But uh, yeah, much better. Okay, so here's the old sleeve. Now, it's only got a maybe a couple hundred plays on it, so I'm not really blaming the sleeve. But I'm going to use, well, I mean, I did use the kind of clear pinball life ones. Pretty sure it's pinball life. It's a, like one sixteenth of a bit longer. So I don't know that's really going to make much of a difference, but I did um, take the flipper apart to take the coil off, I mean. Clean the inside of the coil a little bit better. Some Q-tips and rubbing alcohol. I actually did have to remove this lamp board in order to get the coil out because it was in the way. So everything's taken apart, new sleeve, kind of cleaned up a bit, put back together again. And I don't know how easily I can do this one-handed, but we're gonna try. Let's see. Actually, okay, I'll just hit pause. I'll be right back. Okay, so this is the test right here. Again, I don't have a whole lot of faith. Uh, see that? It's trying to stick. Still trying to stick a little bit. And before, what would happen is it would flip. And it would kind of not like rest all the way back. But after a couple flips, the vibration would cause it to kind of finally settle all the way back. So I'm not exactly convinced yet. But you know what I think I'll do? Let's tighten the return spring. Make it a little bit shorter. And then the only problem with that is when the flipper is trying to move forward, it has more tension going forward 
which makes it harder to make the friggin' jackpot shot. So that's also a fine balance, but uh, let's turn it on. Throw some balls in here to make it happy. All right, you found your balls. You're happy now. Okay. Let's see what happens here. You know, might be okay. Oh, the other thing I should actually consider is changing the alignment of the flipper. Like maybe if it's up a little bit higher, might be able to make that ramp shot easier. You think? Or maybe back further? I don't know, I'll have to check some photos. I thought I had it aligned pretty friggin' nice, but maybe if I go back a little bit, have more of a forward momentum on its swing. But uh, that side ramp, it's friggin' hard. Oh, that actually worked okay. Maybe just tweaking the flipper um, solved both issues. The, the fact that I was having such a hard time making the ramp was probably just the flipper being stuck and not settling all the way back. And then therefore you didn't have much of a swing going forward. So I don't know, still not 100% convinced, but I'll give that a try, play a game. If it uh, screws up again, then I'll maybe reinvestigate, maybe tighten the return spring and see what other things I can do to make it happy. Okay, just played a test game and it's definitely better, but I don't think it's like perfect. I was able to make the uh, jackpot shot. Like it's not sticking like it used to, but occasionally it doesn't rest 100% all the way back. But I think in, in, unless it poses a problem, I'm gonna leave it as is. Seems to be good. Uh, I feel like these saucers, the scoop roofs, I mean to say, probably have uh, raised up over the last couple hundred games because I'm pretty sure I made it a point to not, let's do this first, thank you. Pretty sure I made it a point to not have the roofs touching the plastic because eventually the roofs keep going up and up and up. It's gonna like bend or break the plastic. So I think I need to lower those. They probably raised up a little bit on me and that might be why my, uh, you know, left saucer, I mean, scoop is not kicking out very well. I mean, that whole game, it never came out and hit the slingshot. It was feeding pretty good, but it's pretty close. So I think I'll tweak those and then, um, Holding the flippers for like two minutes, causing the ball to go into, like the machine to go into ball search, might just be a System 11B thing. I posted on the pinball repair help group and someone else seems to agree. So that might just be, it is what it is when you're playing. Don't sit there and hold the ball for two minutes at a time while talking or else ball search will kick on. So that's where I'm at here. I'll tweak those scoops and check my list because I'm nearing the finish line, I think. Okay, I really did kind of crank on these roof lids here, but I wasn't able to get them really to, to do a whole lot. I'm starting to think maybe, did I bring this assembly to Kevin to re-weld at one point? So maybe if I did, then everything's all nice and tight and doesn't want to move too much but I did try and push down a little bit just to make sure that to relieve any pressure upward pressure on the plastic so there's it is actually pushing look at that you know but I don't want to push this roof down any harder or else I might freaking break a weld so it's definitely uh 
touching the plastic and probably when the ball goes in there, it's just doing a little bit of that. The worst thing that's gonna really happen is you break one of these two brand new friggin' plastics that are impossible to change out with ease because it's under the entire ramp assembly. This one's actually not so bad, but you can't just change this plastic very easily because you gotta undo the rivets and re-rivet the sign back on. So <laughs> I don't wanna break the plastics, but I think I'll be fine. So I must have probably already tried that in the past and had similar results. So let's not try the same thing and expect different results because you know what that means or what that is. It is, uh, yeah, you know the answer. Insanity. Hey, check it out. To-do list number one is complete. Now I just got uh, remnants of uh, some old crap there that is not uh, all, and even there's some duplicates here. Left kick out hitting the sling on Whirlwind. And the hard plunge thing, I think that's just gonna be, it is what it is on Whirlwind. Holding the flippers equals ball search. You know what, that might also be an is, it is what it is, so. Unless uh, there's any serious problems from any of this, then uh, they're off the to-do list. And uh, obviously if something pops up that is a problem, it will go on the list. But right now, oh look. See, sometimes I write it down more than once. Whirlwind, left in lane, switch. Another duplicate, okay. That's pretty sweet. Look at this. I should start a brand new list and tidy this up. Yeah, yeah. All right. That's pretty sweet. All right. There's the revised to-do list. Pretty much nothing. A couple things that were on there weren't really a problem anymore. Like one was like pinball magic. Sometimes ball, a couple times got trapped in a weird area that was impossible to find it and get it out. But that hasn't happened for so long that it can come off the list. And so what's left is Lord of the Rings, Palantir switch, likes to still move even though I put an anti-sway switch on it, switch bracket. And then tag team, I think it's got a bit of an issue. Uh, when you stick a ball in the right saucer, sometimes it got confused and wouldn't like kick out another ball because the right saucer is a lock at times, or maybe even not when it's locking. So I thought I fixed that and then it happened in the upper left saucer, which is a different lock and then it wouldn't kick out a ball. So tag team is just a, um, you know, it's a topper holder right now. So not going to really worry about that just yet. If I ever run a tournament in the near future or even a funsy one, then I'll clear this off and see if that issue pops up again. But that's really it. I mean, the games room is pretty much darn close to a hundred percent so that's a good state to be in so I guess uh, I'm done tinkering for now maybe I'll actually have a game of Ghostbusters or something I haven't played that for a little bit so yeah game room tinkering a little bit of six million dollar man update and uh, so this a uh, little bit of miscellaneous stuffs for tonight. Anyway, can't wait to get a new project going. I gotta get make that happen soon. We need something new and exciting. All right, we'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.